Welcome to the next video. In this lecture, you will learn more about inter-process communication. In the previous lecture, you have learned about fork join and you have seen how you can launch different threads or different uh, process or different tasks to execute parallelly or execute independently. In a real test bench, it is often necessary to uh, communicate between these threads that is being launched from a higher hierarchy or which are uh, executing independently, which don't have any information about the other task or the parent task being ex executed. So in the process communication and uh, synchronization events are used to, to communicate between the process that is being launched independently or to synchronize between this process. So these are the system log specific communication mechanism or synchronization and communication mechanisms available which are semaphores, mailboxes and named event. Out of these, semaphores and named events can be used to synchronize between different process and mailboxes can be used to communicate between different process. You will learn more about uh, these three in this lecture and before that just understand that both semaphore and mailbox are inbuilt class in system log which is which is put in the std uh, standard package you don't necessarily need to consider the mass classes you can just consider them as some built-in data type but effectively or actually they are uh, uh, some system logs built-in classes first we will look into semaphore so semaphore is a resource management mechanism so what does it mean is if you have a set of resources which are limited and you wanted to share those resources across multiple process or multiple clients then you need to use a semaphore as an example imagine that you have a function or you have a task which is sending a set of transaction to a DUT interface and since it is sending a transaction to the DUT interface it can be called by only one uh, uh, only one client which is at a time because it's a real-time um, interface communication and the interface in the DUT is a single interface so only one uh, set of transaction can be sent at, at any point in time and uh, also assume that uh, different three different clients are sending transactions to this same DUT maybe it's three different classes three different sequences or three different agents whatever it is you need to limit the access of the, uh, the the actual task which is sending transaction between these uh, three above upper layers so in that case you can use a semaphore here is the example simple example we will go back to the slide again but just to make the point very clear so these are the tasks which is uh, task a task b task c maybe which is being called by three different clients and assume that uh, there is a uh, there is a function to send a transaction uh, into into the DUT. So I haven't written that uh, sent a transaction uh, task here. But this can be executed only by one client at a time. To, uh, to uh, limit the access of the actual uh, resource, which is in this case a function or task to send a transaction between three different clients or three n, n, n set of um, um, consumers, you can use a semaphore. So here is a syntax to use a semaphore and system will log semaphore then semaphore name and in order to use a semaphore after declaring you need to first create the instance of the semaphore using a new function after that any client which is requesting that semaphore can get the semaphore by using the get function and uh, after consuming or after, after completing it completing its uh, consumption it can return the key back to the resource manager by using the put uh, put method or the put function so new get and put are the functions used along with semaphore to manage resources and both get and put are a blocking tra blocking uh, tasks so uh, the the put the get task will get blocked until an item is until a semaphore uh, key is available so just to know if there is some key is available if you wanted to make it as a non-blocking function you can use try get function which is a non-blocking in nature which will just check whether something is available and it will return a success value if something is available and also note that along with all these uh, set of methods you can pass an optional argument which is the number of keys so 
when a semaphore is created using the do function you can pass the number of keys to the semaphore say for example if you're passing one so only a single key will be created and it need to be uh, managed across different clients but if you have say uh, if you're creating with three keys then at a time three different clients can get uh, in th that semaphore but if a fourth client is trying to get uh, uh, that semaphore again it will be getting blocked so that's the number of keys being generated so uh, the number of keys can be passed to all these uh, methods as an argument and if nothing is passed the default argument value will be equal to 1 now coming back to the same example here in the module TB I am declaring a semaphore named sema1 and in the initial begin or somewhere I am creating that semaphore uh, using a new function which is and uh, also note that I am passing a key at the number of keys as 1 and after that three tasks are being forked named a b and c and the task is actually every task is getting the semaphore before doing the uh, before actually sending the transaction so sema one dot get will get blocked until a semaphore key is available the same way uh, the same semaphore sema one dot get in the task b will get blocked until the semaphore key is available so based on what what all are the functions or what all are the time consuming statements in this do something part either task a or task b or task c will get the semaphore first and then it will send the transaction and then it will put back the key uh, using the sema1.put function note that i am passing uh, the number of keys as one for all these uh, all these functions all these methods and once as the semaphore key is put back by the task which is being consumed which is consuming the semaphore then uh, some other task can get some other uh, semaphore get uh, blocking call will be unblocked and it will continue to the uh, execution and after that don't uh, forget to put back the key uh, using the semaphore dot put key now if in case the semaphore dot get calls in all the three tasks are um, being evaluated at the same point in time somehow then any of them can randomly get the semaphore it is not controlled by you it, it is a random choice by the simulation so any of these tasks can get but you really don't 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 need to worry about which one is getting which task is getting the semaphore some some task will get the semaphore it will do the functionality and it will put it back then uh, immediately in the same uh, time region or in the same clock event another task will get and it will execute the functionality and put it back So you have seen about semaphores and their usages and the important thing is always use the get and put in, in a pair uh, in a set of process. So if somebody is taking the key, don't forget to put back the key after performing the required functionality.